Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about all of the books that I read in April. So I read a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books in April, which is about the average that I've been doing. Um, I used to read a lot more when I had a travel-based job, but now that I have an office-based job and I don't get to listen to audiobooks um, at all during the day, whereas I used to while I was traveling, um, I don't read as much. But seven books is not too bad, especially since I was gone for like six days in April. And then also if you hear some chewing, uh, my dog Indy is down here. Uh, she has her little bone. <clears throat> Last time I said that and I didn't show her, people were like, where's Indy? So here she is. She has her little chew thing. Uh, she's just chomping away on it, but she's just gonna hang out down there. So there you go. Uh, for those of you that missed Indy's little cameos on uh, the last couple of videos. So if you watched my April TBR, you would know that I've been doing a book of the month clear out this month. Uh, my friend Gwen has a podcast, Talk Bookish to Me, and we have a Patreon associated with it. And so over on her Patreon, a bunch of us were just kind of helping each other out and giving each other some motivation to uh, read down those subscription box books this month. So I started the month with six and I read four of them and DNF'd one. So I only have one unread book on my shelf for book of the month. Well, okay, technically two, but one is a backlist that I got from a used bookstore. So I'm not counting that. But <laughs> from the subscription service itself, I only have one unread book on my shelf currently. So let's talk about all four of these book of the month books that I read this month. So the first book of the month book that I read was Murder Road by Simone St. James. I love Simone St. James. Uh, she writes like paranormal thrillers and I don't like this cover, but usually her covers are like so good. Um, this one, I don't know really what was happening there, but um, I am pleased to say that I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. So this is set in the 90s. Yeah, 1995. And it's about Eddie and April and they are on their honeymoon. They are, um, you know, they don't have a lot of extra money. They're young. They got married pretty quickly. And so they are going to, I believe it's upstate Michigan to go to um, just a little cabin in the woods um, for their little honeymoon and then they'll go back to their lives. And they're driving on the way there and they're on this road called Atticus Line in this random town and they see a woman on the side of the road. They stop to pick her up and she says, he's chasing me, you need to get me to a hospital. She's covered in blood, she's been stabbed. Before they get to the hospital, uh, she ends up passing away and um, they become the main suspect. So that is basically the synopsis of the book. And it just goes from there. I really liked the characters of Eddie and April. I felt like they were relatable. They were real. You know, they were just two people trying to figure out life together. And of course they had their secrets. Um, but there, I just really liked their love. And even though this wasn't a romance book, I really enjoyed their relationship. Um, I liked how Atticus Line, the road, almost became a character itself and all of the mysterious and sinister things that happened on that road. They also stay at a bed and breakfast. Uh, and the woman who runs the bed and breakfast, she's like obsessed with Princess Diana. And I just love that. The relationships they make in this little town while they're trying to figure out what happened to this woman that died um, are kind of unconventional, but uh, super fun. I really, really liked the characters in this book. Um, I just couldn't give it five stars because I didn't feel like it added a whole lot to um, the paranormal thriller genre. Like it wasn't a story that I've never heard before. And um, it had something in the ending that I don't really like in books. But other than that, I really enjoyed this one and I highly recommend. My friend Jessie from the channel Reading with Jess, uh, she does have a Facebook book club, the Sleep When I'm Dead book club, and they are reading this this month. Um, so by the time you see this, the discussion will have already happened, but I'll link the discussion so you can go back and watch it. Next, I read Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh, and this is a thriller, and it's um, pretty similar to some thrillers you've probably heard about before. Uh, basically, two people meet in a survivor's group for um, survivors of people who had family members murdered, and uh, they agree to kill for each other. The one woman says, I'll kill the person who killed your daughter if you'll kill the person who killed my daughter. And it just kind of goes from there. It's set in New York. Um, I didn't love this. It started off really strong and then it kind of fizzled out. Um, and some of the stuff in the ending just kind of became a little bit ridiculous. Um, I didn't love the characters. I didn't love the way it was set up. And also it was one of those books where you could definitely tell that they were female characters that were written by a male. I'll just leave it at that. So um, I do think this one would be like a fun palette cleanser. Um, there is a good bit of action in it. So if you like action in your thrillers, um, this would be a good one. Um, so yeah, overall, I think it's fine. Um, 
I definitely don't think there's anything wrong with it. It just wasn't mind blowing. So three stars. Okay, next we have The Women by Kristen Hanna. This is Kristen Hanna's most recent work. I've loved a lot of Kristen Hanna books. And this one is no exception. This one is about a woman who joins the army during the Vietnam War and she actually does two tours in Vietnam and then she comes back. So that's the first half of the book is her being in Vietnam. And then the second half of this book is after she comes back to the States after Vietnam. People were not happy that she went. People were literally spitting on her calling her a baby killer, like all of this horrible things and not being thankful for her service. And then um, the amount of PTSD that she experienced um, or back then it was called shell shock or war fatigue, but they didn't really know a whole lot about PTSD. Some of the uh, criticisms that I've heard about this book was that it gets kind of boring in the second half, which I will agree to an extent, um, but I also feel like this was a very real depiction of what PTSD probably looked like in that time. And based on the author note in the back, Kristen Hanna did a lot of research and talked to a lot of veterans about their experience and um, female uh, nurse veterans as well. So um, I definitely see where people were like kind of bored. And honestly, I had a, a little bit of a point in time in this book where I was a little bit bored, but I appreciate what it did. I think it's something that's not talked about very much is um, PTSD, especially in that time. There was even people who were like, like other veterans that were like, oh, women weren't in Vietnam. And they were telling her like, no, don't come to this veteran rally. Don't come to the support group, um, even though they themselves were veterans. Um, and, you know, people were dissuading her from going saying, oh, the men won't want to talk if there's a woman there and things like that. And um, I'm sure that would be really hard, you know, like they can fight next to you and you can, you know, save their lives in a war hospital, but you can't join them in their marches. And so I really felt for this character and everything that she went through. I did give this book four stars. Um, it didn't give me those five star feelings. Um, and also I almost felt bad for the character. Like, come on, Kristen Hanna, like give her a break. Just so many horrible, awful things happened to this character in her life. I almost felt like she just couldn't catch a break. By the end, I was like, come on, Kristen Hanna, like hasn't she suffered enough? Um, so while I'm usually one that I like a melancholy ending, I don't like things tied up in a bow. Um, there was a couple things uh, about the ending that just I didn't really vibe with um, as much as I typically would. Um, so that being said, I did give it four stars, but I highly recommend this book. I think it is super necessary. I think the first half is like action packed and the second half is just super emotional. And so yeah, really good. Highly recommend. Just didn't give me those five star feelings. And then the last book of the month that I'm going to talk about did give me those five star feelings and it is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I should have known going into this, Abby Jimenez has become one of my favorite authors very quickly. I have loved so many of her books. This is, I think, the third book that I've given five stars um, and I've given a couple four stars. I think the lowest thing I've given an Abby Jimenez book is a three star. But this is about Emma and Emma has this uh, like weird power or curse where uh, after she dates somebody, the next person they date becomes their soulmate. And she, through a Reddit thread, meets a guy who has the same thing. And so they decide um, maybe we should date and kind of like counteract the curse. So if we date each other, then if the curse is real, then the next pe people that we date will be our soulmate. Uh, the only problem is he's in Minnesota and she's a travel nurse. Things go from there. Abby Jimenez is so good at the imagery of Minnesota. I have never wanted to go to Minnesota more than after I am reading an Abby Jimenez book. Um, this also follows some of the same characters as um, part of your world and yours truly. You don't have to read them in order, but Abby Jimenez does a great job of leaving those little Easter eggs. And so um, I loved getting to uh, see some of the characters again from those other books and just kind of like seeing what they're up to and how they're doing. Um, it is one of those things where like you kind of, it kind of spoils it a little bit because you know who gets together, but then at the same time, it's a romance. So does it really spoil it? We all kind of know what's gonna happen, right? But there was so many little tidbits that I caught, even like at one point, the male character in this was wearing a t-shirt. And I was like, oh, that had something to do with the Happy Ever After playlist. And so like just linking the books together, it was just so much fun. And I love how Abby Jimenez takes a fluffy romance and puts very deep emotional content in it without making it feel like a deep emotional, like 
Colleen Hoover type of book. The female character in here, Emma, um, suffered a lot of trauma and abuse uh, from her mother when she was a child and she was put in the foster care system. Um, so she definitely struggles with PTSD from that. And there was so much about this character that I related to. So it's kind of like what people have been saying about listening to the new Taylor Swift album. You know, people are like, oh, I'm in a uh, perfectly healthy relationship, but for the next, you know, 48 hours, I'll be going through a breakup with Taylor or whatever. Like that's how I feel with this. So yeah, if you pick up no book other than this one in this video, you won't be disappointed. Okay, and now let's talk about the only book that I don't own physically that I read this month, well, listen to, and that was Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. And this is about a woman who is from a small town in Texas. And uh, she left the town years ago because she was accused of murdering her best friend. They went to a wedding one night and uh, she was found dead and um, they think that she was the main suspect. And so now she's coming back a couple of years later for her grandmother's birthday party. The grandmother in this book was the best part. She was so funny. She lives in this, like one of those tiny houses and uh, she always has a margarita and she like dates men and she has a different man over every time you see her and I just love it. Uh, she was so funny. There was some really funny moments in uh, this book, but overall I felt like the plot was lacking in a lot. Um, I felt like the characters were annoying. Um, it had like kind of a strange romance to it. Um, it had a podcast element, which I did enjoy. That was probably my favorite part of the book was um, hearing it and it sounds just like a podcast, but it just got a little bit ridiculous. Like as it kept going, it was one of those things like I was scrolling my eyes as each thing was revealed. It gave the Hunting Wives vibes. Maybe that was just cause it was set in Texas. I don't know. But this was also the buddy read for my friend Jessie's um, membership on YouTube, Reading with Jess. Her membership were called the Paw Print Pals. And um, so definitely join her YouTube membership if you want to do buddy reads with us every month. The next book is The Partner Plot by Christina Forrest. And I got this when I was on my girls trip in Vegas. And I did that because you can see it says on here, what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. And last year, Christina Forrest's book, um, The Neighbor Favor, I actually bought that while I was on Girls Trip last year. And I read it when I was at the beach and I gave it four stars. And so I was so excited for the partner plot. It was one of my most anticipated reads uh, because it was Christina Forrest and because Vegas. And so of course I picked it up while we were at Barnes and Noble in Vegas. Um, unfortunately, this is probably my least favorite book of the month. I still gave it three stars, but um, it's probably like a low three. So um, this is about Violet and she and Xavier were high school sweethearts. Uh, Xavier breaks up with her after high school when they like just get to college. Um, and then it's like years later and um, they meet up in Vegas and um, they kind of reconnect and have one night and then they wake up the next day with rings on their fingers and like a marriage certificate. Well, they quickly realize that it's fake. They decide to use that to their advantage because uh, she is trying to make jealous her ex fiance um, who also kind of like works in the fashion industry um, alongside her. And then he is trying to get a job as a basketball coach at a college. Um, and the reason that that he wants to be married to her, wants him to think that is because he thinks that if he's married, then they will see him as um, more reliable, um, settled down, um, not as kind of like recluse and just kind of, you know, I don't really know. It doesn't really make sense to me because married people can just up and leave and move all the time. I feel like being married doesn't mean that you're stable. It just means that you have a certificate that says you're married. It doesn't necessarily, one does not equal, marriage does not equal stability, right? I mean, am I crazy in that? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I feel like being married doesn't automatically mean you're stable or there, I can think of a lot of unstable people that are married. <laughs> wow, that was a tangent. Anyways. Um, I just felt like the stakes weren't very high. Um, I just felt like the reasoning behind it didn't make sense. Um, there was literally like 0.2% of this book that actually took place in Vegas, yet you would never know that by the cover. Um, I couldn't really relate to the main character. Yeah, it just, mm. I mean, it's a three star. I think that if you like um, second chance romance or if you like marriage of convenience, um, that would be fine. I thought this was marriage of convenience. I didn't know it was uh, second chance romance. But once I learned that, I was like, oh gosh. But anyways, Jessie also read this at the same time as me because she also got it um, and brought it with us to Vegas. Um, so maybe she liked it a little bit more. We'll have to wait and see her wrap up. And then the last book I'm going to talk about is Sold on a Monday by Christina McMorris. And I think I heard about this book from Krista from Books and Jams. 
Krista, did you tell me about this book? I can't remember now, but um, I got it at a used bookstore for a dollar and thirty nine cents. So, um, and it's a great copy. It's in like perfect condition. Um, but this one wasn't really it. I gave it three stars. It was fine. It's historical fiction. Um, it's based in like the nineteen thirties, and um, it's about this struggling reporter who sees a sign um, on the side of the road saying like two children for sale, basically. And he takes a picture. And the picture um, gets put in the newspaper and it like kind of blows up and it's like this big thing for his career. Um, it ends up being devastating for uh, the family involved in the picture. And so then he and um, this other girl at the paper, Lillian, uh, decide to help this fractured family because he caused it because of the picture. I don't know. It That's the synopsis, but it goes a lot further than that. But um, it kind of took forever to get to the point. Um, and then when it was finally getting good, it said there was like 15 minutes left on the audiobook. So I was like, okay, well, how are they going to wrap this up? And then they kind of didn't wrap it up. So I don't know. And then there was like a kind of a romance. It's set in Philadelphia. So it has um, some like nice vibes of like, you know, like the 30s, um, like the end of the Roaring Twenties, um, a little bit of Great Depression. And then it also has some like New York vibes. So I did like that. But I don't know, this was just this was just not it. I feel like there's plenty of better historical fiction books about the Great Depression that you could find better books about journalism as well. So not a favorite. Don't know that I'll pick up another Christina McMorris book. But Oh, well. <laughs> okay, that's all the books I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, please let me know down in the comments below what was your favorite book of April? Um, have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? Tell me all of the things in the comments. I love talking to you all in the comments. I try to reply to most of my comments. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.